All right, so if you stuck around since the last video, then you want to know how black tie mode actually works. This is the video I'm going to show you how all of that works and how you can get up and running with it. First of all, you do need Zimwriter for it. You go to zimwriter.com or rankingtactics.com. You can get a Zimwriter license from both of those places. And it's bring your own API key. You got to have a text AI model like Open Router. You need an image AI model and then you'll you know a scraping API model. I explain all of this in the onboarding video for Zimwriter, so definitely check that out. But all of the different things mentioned are all pay as you go. You only pay for what you actually use, which is why these articles are like two pennies each. It's insane. So again, we're not going to dive into actually how to get up and running with Zimwriter. You can go get yourself a license, watch the onboarding video, and then figure all that out. There's also, again, I want to remind you, a Facebook group for Zimwriter with 15,000 members in it. And we also have a Discord group too. So lots of ways to get help with Zimwriter because Zimwriter, it's complex software, but it can do amazing things. So let's talk about how to make these product roundups that you're probably ooing and aahing over. Update Zimwriter, you need the latest version. I'm on 10.855 or a version that's later than that. And you'll go to the AI Vault and you'll click on bulk product roundups. And if you've used this before, then you'll be pleasantly surprised that now we have profiles up here. You can save profiles. So what a profile is, you configure all your settings and then you give this a name like profile one, and then you save your profile with all your, and it will save all your settings. So when you come back into Zimwriter, you can just load your profile and you don't have to reconfigure everything again. Very powerful, cool new feature inside of the software. But let's talk about this black tie mode. So there's this option over here called black tie mode. And when you click it, instead of the typical way that Zimwriter would upload the articles to WordPress where you'd, for a roundup, where you'd have your Amazon image, and then you'd have some text, like some pros and some cons, and then you'd have a, a view latest price button. Instead of that, it will create something like this, but it won't look like this to begin with. What it's going to look like is, let's see if I can flush my cache. is this. So if you write a product roundup and you enable black tie mode, again, that's all you really have to do, your output will look like this. And you're probably scratching your head thinking, well, that's not, that's not what Matt showed me. Why, why does my stuff look like this? It's the power of something called CSS. All right. CSS is uh, HTML. If you know what HTML is, HTML builds the structure. CSS makes it look pretty. So HTML is like the guts of your car. And the CSS is the shell, the body, the thing that makes it all look stylish. We need to add some CSS to our site to make it look pretty. Now, again, this only works with WordPress. So assuming you're using WordPress, you'll log into your site after you've uploaded, you upload an article, first of all, and you're looking at it and it looks like this or something like this. You'll click customize and then you'll scroll all the way down in this menu to additional CSS. So we have to, now yours might be empty. I have some custom CSS already on my site for various things. Yours, yours is probably empty, but we need to add some CSS to make this look pretty. So here's how you do it. It's very, very simple. Again, to get to this menu, all we do is we log into our site and we click customize up here. All right, we scroll down and click on additional CSS and we scroll all the way down in the box to the bottom. Go back to Zimwriter and click on this advanced settings. And there's a link down here. Click to copy black tie CSS file to clipboard. Just click it. That's all you got to do. Then we go over here and I'll make a new line and then we just paste it in and you'll see what happens. Here, let me scroll down to show you. Let's paste it in. Look at that. That's all you got to do. <laughs> see, let me take it out. Let me take it out. And we'll scroll down over here and we'll paste it in. Look at that. It all looks pretty amazing, huh? That's literally all you got to do. Now there's a couple more considerations. Now I don't know what theme you're using right now. This is the black sea theme. Some themes have a wider area than others. Some themes have a narrower area than others. So this might not look exactly like mine. It will still probably be a box, but it might look a little bit different. If it does, you're going to have to figure out how to modify it for your particular theme. All right. Usually it's not my code you have to modify. It's like other CSS code on your actual site. You can ask ChatGPT or you can ask inside of the Facebook group to style it for your particular theme. But again, this will work for most themes. You're just going to hit some hurdles where it's either too wide or too narrow. That's pretty easy. The second thing you might want to do is create some contrast with your background on your site and these product boxes. Let me show you what I mean. Now, again, 
this customization window is going to look completely different if you're not using Bloxy. So there's probably a, a place on your site where you can adjust the background for, for your entire site. But let me show you what I mean. So my site background is this right here, but let me just erase it and set my site background as white. When you set it as white, uh, like down here, for instance, you can't really tell that this is a different color than this. Like it all just blends together a little bit. All right. But when we use a different color for the background than for our product boxes, you can see it pop. Watch what happens. You see it pop. Let me go back to pure white and show you. See, you really can't tell. But when we add this, it's FAF9, F9, that you can really tell the contrast. Now, you might know CSS and you can dive in and make your own settings, but that's probably a setting that you'll want to adjust. As far as that goes, though, everything should work out of the box. Uh, but again, if there's styling issues where your, yours looks a little bit different than mine, it's CSS. You're going to have to figure it out for your own theme. I'm not tech support, unfortunately, in terms of customizing it for your theme. Let me, let me purge the cache. So my CSS takes effect and there we go. Nice and beautiful. Now there's some other stuff that we can customize in here. Let's go back to, to Zim Writer and I'll scroll down to show you. So there is a call to action text color, which is, it, this is a call to action. And this is a call to action. If you want this background right here to look a little bit different, you can just adjust this call to action text color and also this call to action text. Let me show you an example of a site that has a different, a different, call, a different call to action text color. So this over here, I set it to red, right? I set the tagline to red and the call to action to red. So again, this does your call to action color, the tagline is, that's this right here and the counter down here are affected by this. And then there's a, our verdict text, which is right here. It's in the actual review. You can change that to whatever you want. And then there's a link to the read our analysis. So you can change that to whatever you want inside of ZimWriter. Now, obviously this only takes effect on new articles that you're creating, All right, If you're creating a brand new article, then you can modify that, but it doesn't work for existing articles. That's all the settings that you need to mess with in here. Now, if you want to read the guide, you click this little link here and it takes you to my, my product run of guide. And I just updated this guide for these new features today. So you can read all about these new features in this particular guide if you have any questions. So that's kind of uh, everything that you need to know for making these product roundups. And again, they're just, I can't get over how good they look. I'm not saying that just because I made it, but they legitimately look good. And the fact that for each type of product, we have different things like category, origin, closure. These are lace, these are double lace lock. These are no sew overlays. Let's toothbrushes. Let's see these electric, electric toothbrushes. We have type, mode, and battery life. It's incredible. Dog beds. This is a uh, type memory, orthopedic support, and then waterproofing. It's just, it blows my mind when I read this. And by the way, these images, so these are images are using the new AI image model called Z image pro. I love the fact that there's a Z in there. Z image pro it's on runware. These are a fifth of one penny. So five images, five of these images is one penny. That's why these articles are so cheap. It's just it, two pennies for your, these articles is absolutely insane. I'm using, so these were using uh, GPT-5 Nano for both the writing model and the ancillary model. But I do, but I do have articles written by, let's see, Claude Haiku, which are a little bit more expensive. They're nine pennies each. So a hundred articles would be nine bucks. And it's a little bit higher quality. Now, obviously you can use Claude Sonnet 4.5 if you want to. I don't even know why you'd need to though. Like the quality is just phenomenal with this stuff. I love it. And one more thing, I guess I forgot to mention this. ZimWriter allows you to use so many different models. There's so many different AI models inside of ZimWriter. Sometimes your roundup won't look like this. It will be back to being what the original style roundup was, where we don't have like these quick picks up here. We just have that image of the product, the title, and then pros and cons and a call to action. Reason being is ZimWriter does a lot behind the scenes to get all this figured out, to get the attributes, to get the taglines, to build all this. So sometimes it fails. What's the failure rate? I've been testing this very heavily on 4.1 nano and five nano and Claude Haiku. And it's like 1%, one or 2% failure rate now 
But if you use a different model, if you use like OSS or you use Llama or something, I can't guarantee what it's going to look like. And I still can't guarantee what it's going to look like because the AI can be the AI. So you're going to get some failures every now and then, right? That's just, and you'll have to deal with it, whether either delete the article or just run with the layout that it gives you. I can't do anything about that, but that will happen. So if you do have questions, that's why it, it happened. Uh, I think that's it. By the way, I'm going to plug it again. If you have not taken my free prompt engineering course, go to getprompted.ai take my free course. You don't even need to register to take it. I have 33 lessons in here of really useful prompting skills, right? That you can just immediately pick up and learn and apply. It will make you better at prompting because right now you have to distinguish yourself from everyone else. Why, why should my boss or why should someone else not replace me with AI? This teaches you how to become irreplaceable by working with the AI. And then also there's a free GPT collection, completely free for copywriting purposes. Definitely, if you're going to do anything, use the buyer persona one. That thing is money. It's absolute money in terms of what it creates. I was blown away. I'm going to reveal that in my newsletter that's coming out. I'm releasing my newsletter tomorrow, but then we'll have an update next week about it. Amazing stuff. Check these free GPTs out. Check the free course out. All that great stuff. Links in the description. Drop a comment. That's all I got. Hey, I hope you enjoy this new black tie feature. I really do. I want to hear your thoughts. Other than that, I'm going to take a break right now. I'm tired. I've been up till one o'clock in the morning every single night. I'm losing sleep over here, but this is cool. I'm happy. I'm excited. I hope you're pumped. I hope you're excited too. Good luck with your content generation and I'll talk to you later.